folks uh folks in the meeting uh hope you're doing well uh thank you for joining us i know roughly 350 people have joined us today so thank you again for joining uh just to understand your uh your background uh can you just put it in the chat box if you're a mechanical engineer which year did you pass out or if you are going to pass out in the future just mention uh, the year of pass out if you're working just say working and the design uh, and the role if you're not a mechanical engineer tell us uh, who, what is your major as well so chemical aerospace and and what not so uh, if you can just chinmaya mechanical 2017 thanks saurabh one year mechanical mechanical anybody okay yes mechanical anybody outside mechanical engineering any electrical electronic civil computer science engineers out here ashish thanks doing master's program in design at skill link sri ram rode great ajay thank you great looks like a we looks like we have a lot of mechanical engineers today that's great to hear i'm a mechanical engineer i graduated in 20 I think 2011 uh, in my undergrad, and uh, uh, have been uh, trying to kind of motivate more mechanical engineers to uh, pick up mechanical engineering as their uh, uh, primary uh, area of interest. So that's what I've been doing uh, over the last six, seven years. So uh, great to see a lot of mechanical engineers out here. Um, so welcome, folks. How many of you are come? Uh, thanks, thanks to see that. Uh, uh, of seeing uh, your undergrad in chemical electrical engineering. Uh, folks, uh, who are the folks uh, who have uh, uh, attended our previous uh, Saturday's webinar? So if you have attended our webinar on Saturday, that would be very helpful. Uh, if you could let me know, that would be helpful. If not, that's fine. Um, anyways, I'll kind of give a quick overview as well. So, did you, did you guys attend the Saturday webinar uh, by any chance? Okay, I, I see no. Uh, if you if you've attended, uh, just say yes. If not, no, that's okay. So the time is seven zero four. Uh, probably we'll start in a bit. I'm just going to see a few more things and probably we can start. Great. Okay. Great. So which uh, so which part of the country most of you are from? I'm I'm in Chennai and I'm taking this meeting from Chennai. Uh, how many how many people from Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, uh, I see Andhra Pradesh, Delhi, Maharashtra. West Bengal, Ashish, West Bengal. We are folks from Bihar, uh, Mohammed Siddiqui. We have Sanjay from Madhya Pradesh. Right. A lot of folks from Maharashtra. We have Vishal from Gujarat, uh, Sriram from Pune. Great guys, we have a excellent lineup of people uh, today. Uh, so great. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to kind of get into a very interactive uh, space, right? Uh, since a lot of you did not attend our Saturday session, I will kind of take you through a few uh, quick points of what's happening. Right, and uh, we'll go from that. Right, so <clears throat> we can hope you can see my screen. Let me know if you guys can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, Surya, you can see your screen. Great, great. Hey, we have Andrew from Tanzania, and uh, we have uh, Raipur, Ibran from Raipur, we have Kartik from Rajasthan, we have Kanuri Pranay from Barangal. Oh, we have. People from all over the country and uh, some people from different countries as well. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time on a Monday evening. Uh, hope we'll make this uh, useful. Uh, and uh, from there on, we'll kind of go deeper, right? So uh, 
one of the things that we wanted to kind of look into is uh, so I'll kind of go deeper into one aspect of it. Uh, so decoding jobs for mechanical engineers, right? Like that's that's one of the uh, aspects that we wanted to kind of uh, speak about today, right? As we speak about today, um, let me just reshare my screen. Give me one minute. I will move this here. I have two screens, so I'm just setting it up um, so that it doesn't disturb any of you as well. Can you see my screen, Vivek? Yes, Surya, we can see your screen. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, great. <clears throat> so a uh, few things, right? So this, this webinar is about decoding job opportunities for uh, mechanical engineers. And uh, as we kind of go through this webinar, I wanted to kind of uh, this also speak about what are the mega uh, macros that are happening across the world and how that is impacting uh, jobs for mechanical engineers, especially, and how it is kind of creating more jobs in India for mechanical engineers. So uh, I'll kind of start with that. Uh, even before that, uh, if you don't know, Skilling is an engineering education platform. Uh, we have been backed by some of the uh, best uh, funds and also by NSDC. Uh, we are the, one of the training partners for National Skill Development Corporation in the core engineering spectrum, right? Uh, we roughly have 30,000 students uh, enrolled in our courses, taking up our courses in order to upskill themselves in core engineering domains such as uh, mechanical, electrical, electronic, civil, and computer science. And in, in these uh, specific skills, we kind of focus on electric vehicle, power electronics, uh, design, uh, computational fluid dynamics, finite element analysis, and so on, right? So while, while saying that, and uh, we have also partnered with a lot of companies that hire our students, and uh, we have seen tremendous success for students who put in their effort, right? So at the end of the day, uh, Skilling is just an education platform. So we are benefited by the people who put their effort, right? So if we just have courses and nobody learns that course, nothing will happen. And we have been fortunate enough that people who have enrolled in our courses take up the course, go through the coursework, and also succeed as a part of the coursework. So that's a quick overview of what Skilling is. Uh, I'll kind of, since a lot of you did not attend my previous talk, right? There are a few things that has happened uh, over the last uh, two to three years, right? Uh, the first question, right, uh, is uh, do you know where COVID happened? Where did COVID essentially uh, come, originate from? If you say, hey, uh, here's, which is, here's the country from which COVID originated from, which country was that? Anybody who wants to take a guess? Yeah, Sai Kumar said it's China, right? A lot of you uh, mentioned it's China, right? Absolutely. What happened when COVID essentially came in China was that uh, China went through something called as a zero COVID policy. Zero COVID policy meant they are not going to open up the country unless they contain COVID and there is no patient with COVID. Right? In, since they essentially put a strict lockdown, what started happening was a lot of people, a lot of these, a uh, uh, lo lot of the manufacturing. So we all know what is the manufacturing hub of the world? What is one of the biggest manufacturing hub of the world? The answer is the same, China, right? So when the biggest manufacturing hub of the world essentially closed down, what started happened was it started breaking the supply chain say for example if you had booked your uh, if you had booked your uh, car or vehicle in your uh, in 2020 you would have seen a 6 to 8 month delay have you if you have seen type uh, say, uh, let me know right if you have seen a 6 to 8 month delay in getting your car or bike delivered when you booked it in 2020 or 2021 the primary reason was because a lot of the components that would make this uh, product were manufactured in China and essentially had to be shipped. And since China went into a zero, uh, zero COVID policy, what happened was a lot of these 
uh, product companies started getting affected. And that's when all the countries together and all the big manufacturing companies together came with a strategy called China plus one, right? Do Google this uh, about, uh, do Google this strategy. It's called China plus one. This China plus one strategy, what it meant was every top manufacturing company said, hey, I need a alternate supplier than China. There are other countries that they started looking at, Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, Brazil, right, Mexico, and one of the other countries that they were looking at was India as well. Two reasons why people started looking at India. India was always a manufacturing hub, but uh, India has the biggest engineering talent pool, right? India has the biggest engineering talent pool. And the second reason is India has a, a lot of a uh, lot of engineers, right? A lot of engineers who speak English, right? Uh, so that's that's the primary aspect of it, right? So uh, what we are going to look at, so Vajahat uh, Dongre had asked, what is the primary topic? So since India is one of the, is looked at as one of the alternate for China, there are a lot of companies that are setting up their manufacturing hubs in China say for example, in, in India, for example, Apple, Foxconn, uh, Hyundai, and, and so on, right? So what we are looking at is an opportunity to essentially become a very, very big production product and manufacturing hub over the next two decades. And obviously, right, if you become a very good product and manufacturing hub, what happens, right? There are a lot more job opportunities for mechanical, electrical, civil engineers that kind of start to be developed in India, right? And that is one of the reasons uh, we wanted to kind of speak about the opportunities for mechanical engineers in India, right? Very, very simple and straightforward. So COVID and China plus one strategy kickstarted the, uh, the companies looking into India as an alternate supplier. But even before that, right, what the government did was something called as production linked incentives. You should also Google this. It's called PLI. The first one is China plus one. The second one that you should Google for is PLI, production linked incentive. What it means is government saying, hey, produce and manufacture in India. I will provide you an incentive to do that. It might be a tax waiver for companies. It might be providing land for building the production unit. It might be some sort of a waiver, right? A lower electricity bill or whatnot, right? So produce in India is one of, make in India, where you would have heard our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji speaking about make in India in multiple forums and all our ministers speaking about make in India as well. And one of the schemes was production linked incentives, right? So now there are in production linked incentives, especially there is PLI for semiconductors, PLI for automobiles, PLI for defense equipments, right? So I'll kind of give you an example. What happened, right? In 2013, we had 10x less the amount of smartphones in 2013. So, but we essentially 97 or 92 percentage of the smartphones that we used were manufactured outside India, right? In 2013, 92 percentage of phones were manufactured outside India. In 2020, we had 10x more smartphones, and unbelievable 97 percentage of phones were manufactured in India. Right? And what what was the root cause for this? Right? The root cause was there was something called as a production linked incentive for electronic components. I think in 2016, 2017, 2018, I do not remember the exact year. What it made people to do was manufacture in India to distribute in India and also manufacture in India to export, right? So one PLI in electronic components has shifted a large amount of production of mobile phones in India. Similarly, now, as I said, if you remember, that is PLI for aero, uh, automotive, especially in the electric vehicle segment. PLI for semiconductors, you will be surprised. You go and uh, look at today's, uh, you go and look at today's uh, news, right? And just search for semiconductors and India uh, in your, in Google, right? You will see uh, news about some countries looking at India as the 
next semiconductor hub right semiconductors are important because semiconductors are everywhere right every electronic component your car anything that you use as has a semiconductor right and the third fourth and fifth right so ev revolution right you know we are going through a revolution in electric vehicles so 2010 to 2020 is what we call as the understanding of electric vehicles the discovery of electric vehicles 2020 to 2040 is where people are saying it's the adoption of electric vehicles right uh, and and then the industry essentially is moving industry 4.0 a lot of automation and then sustainable sustainable development right green energy solar power and what not right these are the five significant events that are making sure that over the next two decades 2020s 2030s by end of 2030 or 20 or 2039 or 20 beginning of 2040 there would be a significant amount of manufacturing product and product building done in india because of a lot of you guys right you are you will be at the forefront of building these companies now if you are at the forefront of building these companies so for every for every opportunity there is also a ability to lose that opportunity right how can india lose that opportunity india can lose that opportunity only by one reason which is while we have enough people if we do not have these people in the right talent right have the right skills then we will lose the opportunity so our main role and goal should be to essentially have the right skill sets to make sure that we succeed in any of your dream companies or dream careers so that if we if each of us succeed in our dream career india will succeed as a result of us pursuing our dreams very very simple right so that's that's what we again just want to set some context out here right and uh, i'll kind of uh, go to the next step right so again so in this slide what you need to uh, take away is there are a lot of opportunities that are being built a lot of people say for example um how many of you have heard uh, the phrase that the all the jobs are in it industry how many of you have heard this and how many of you believe this saurabh says yes how many of you have heard that all the jobs are in it industry right so i see folks essentially saying yes right how many of you have heard about the opportunities in the manufacturing and the mechanical engineering uh front right how many of you have heard about this right uh, the problem is while see it and it services right india has always been a hub for information technology and information technology oriented engineering services and it happened started from 90s and early 2000s and also in the 2010 but in from 2010 onwards uh, there has been a good shift towards this it it services itself moving towards engineering services right if you have heard about companies like scient quest global explio tata technologies all these are companies that provide engineering services right it might be engineering design engineering analysis services to other global companies right so what we are seeing is And, and see, unfortunately or fortunately, we as engineers, right? When we study in an undergrad, what we have kind of been tuned to is, irrespective of what engineer you are, you will get hired at CTS, TCS, or Wipro or Infosys, right? And 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 uh, uh, and irrespective of what you are, right? But what has what we do not know is, and and the other aspect of it is, people always say there are no core engineering jobs. getting core engineering jobs is difficult or core engineering jobs do not pay well so this is two things have you heard that core engineering jobs is difficult and core engineering jobs do not pay well right if if you have heard that term these two terms or uh, put it in the chat box i'm i'm seeing that right so we were, we have been trained and accustomed why think about it why do core engineering jobs and core uh, why do people say that there are less core engineering jobs and why do people say that core engineering jobs pay less right the problem is what we learn in undergrad only allows us to get to a right see we learn a lot of theory in undergrad lot of theory 
but the unfortunate thing is we do not know how to solve real world problems using this theory and that's the problem right that's the single problem statement we do not know how to solve engineering real world engineering problems by applying the theory on computational tools right we learn solid works we learn cat we learn nx cat but we learn only how to extrude revolve or what not a sweep or what not right we might learn the fundamental of tool knowledge in our undergrad but nothing about that right and some independent students go about and and essentially get right but um, get knowledge but in college that's what we learn right um so the krishna is asking sir if should we go for it sector jobs why is it so see the problem is right the amount of jobs in india especially in the manufacturing and product companies is go growing at a rapid pace rapid pace right the problem is there is not enough people with the right skill sets right say for example today we are going to look at what are the right skill sets right that you should look into right that's the goal for us in this uh, in this next one hour right uh, probably to, now it's 7:20 it will go till 8:30 right i the goal for me at the uh, kartik is saying core engineering gets very less salary guys this is the most uh, i i agree at one say but this is what we have been trained right say a wipro infosys or a tcs or a cts gives 3.5 lakhs for a it guy right they do not provide 7 8 lakhs right there are only one or two people who get 7 8 lakhs in product companies but most of the uh, mass recruiters provide 3.5 to 3.6 lakhs right core engineering companies are providing 4.2 to 4.5 lakhs that they also provide 3.6 lakhs the only question is do you have the talent right it's also not about talent you will have the talent it's about skill right sorry if, uh, i'm not saying you are not talented i'm saying are you skilled right talent and skill are two different things right all of us are talented all of us do we have that particular skill that the company is looking for say for example a infosys tcs or a wipro have a training machinery right so when you get recruited they put you irrespective of your engineering degree into a training machinery where you get trained for 2 3 months and then you go into the flow and essentially start coding or what not or essentially quality analyst or what not but in a engineering services company like a scient or any oem or a uh, tier one supply they do not have that bandwidth to train people and that is why people are looking for a skilled engineer who is already trained right very very simple but the salary is still at a very competitive play even in the uh, core engineering spectrum so that is one thing that i want you to take i want you to remove all your assumptions the assumption that engineering service in engineering mechanical engineering core jobs are less please remove that the amount of jobs that are going to come and is already present is very very high there is a less demand there is a higher demand for skilled talent but less supply of skilled talent right less supply of skilled talent there are more engineers i'm not saying there are not but there are less number of skilled engineers right i am i am the i am one of them right i'm not saying i i know everything i'm one of them i'm just saying that how do we this uh, uh, aditya world is going through recession does not matter world can go through recession india is the only country which is growing roughly around 6 percentage year over year right india's growth rate is roughly around 6 percentage year over year but and one of the primary reasons that we are seeing that is india has a very very fundamental structure that we can grow at 6 or 5 percentage over the next few years as well which means that there are going to be a lot of job opportunities which because of all the five things that you are seeing in your screen right i'll kind of get into uh, the job opportunities for mechanical engineers and core engineering design right this is the crux of it i'm going to have this as a three part right i'm going to break this down into design i'm going i'm going to break this into product development and product development into what are the different aspects of product development and then go into design analysis and take analysis into fine entanglement and analysis and computational fluid dynamics right great um so i'm going to take a real life example 
right? How are new products developed, right? Can you guys take a guess on what are the stages in new product development? If you can just take a guess on what are the stages in new product development, that will be very helpful. Uh, if you can speak about uh, what are the different stages of new products uh, development, just take a guess. What is the stage one? Planning, problem statement, customer requirement, recognition of problem, benchmarking, market survey, purpose. So I'm getting a lot of good responses, right? So that should be a for all invention, right? Say for example, we are a fam someone out here is a family of five, right? They need to travel, right? And they need to travel at a safe, comfortable, and easy to maintain and has the mileage as well, right? It's a family of five. So first, in order, if I'm preparing, if any company is preparing a car out here, what will they look at, right? What are the stages in development? Even before a product is launched, in the development, these are the, this is the way that they look at. One is market research. First, essentially, what is the, what are the markets? Uh, what are the products in the market that essentially has a five, um, allows five people in the family to move comfortably? Then this world brainstorming comes. We all engineers sit together and understand, okay, this is the market research. This is where the opportunities are. And essentially we think, we, we, we should compete in a particular segment and therefore they go develop a concept. Once the concept is developed, what is concept development? And this is where the, see, this is more about market research, brainstorming is more uh, top 50,000 feet. But here is where as an engineer, you start coming in, right? So as a mechanical engineer in the concept development, you start sketching, right? You start giving a rough sketch of a car after you speak with your, you are a design engineer in the, or a sketching engineer uh, uh, or an industrial designer, you are sitting in the brainstorming session and then you have your ideas, you collate all the ideas, you sketch, right? You Here is where we use tools like alias. If you have heard about AutoCAD alias, sketching is where, so they take a concept and sketch that concept. Once the concept is sketched, it's more of two dimensional. Now we need to essentially go and develop the product and detail and give dimensions to it. That's the product development and detailing. This is where a CAD computer aided design engineer or a design engineer or a senior design engineer comes into play, right? So I will kind of speak about this in more detail. Once the design stage is done, comes simulation. Simulation can be multi-body dynamics. Can, the simulation can be finite element analysis. Simulation can be computational fluid dynamics. Very simply, simulation is to understand when I build this product, when I put it into the uh, real world, what will happen, right? And how can I simulate what happens in the real world using a computer? Very, very simple, right? FEA is nothing but, we all would have learned finite element analysis or FEA. FEA is nothing but understanding the structural stability of the product. Computational fluid dynamics is nothing but understanding either how fluid flow will impact the stability of the product. And then multi-body dynamics is how multiple bodies together essentially have the at a in a dynamic state, how multiple bodies together act and what is the stability or st stress that it induces. Once you simulate, then you make a uh, test product and you physically test it. Then once you physically test it, you manufacture and then market. Right? So uh, these are the stages in development, right? So now, now that we have seen the stages in development, again, I will kind of quickly go through this market research. So for a car that we are looking at, we'll look at, okay, what are the geography and terrain, right? Is it cold? Is it going to be a cold terrain? Is it going to be a hot terrain? Um, uh, is, it, is the terrain is essentially has a lot of bumps, Right? Are we going to use the car in the India? Uh, are we going to use the car outside in probably US or Euro? Right? That's where geography, demography, who is going to, who is this car going to be marketed to? Is it for a 18 to 21 year old or a 30 to 35 year old uh, or, or a 60 year old, right? And what is the climate? Say in India, it's a hot country. 
in Europe or US, it's a cold country. What's what's the climate like? Then we essentially discuss, okay, and brainstorm. Here is where concepts are concept development. So this is what it will look like. Hey, this is what uh, the uh, requirements are, and in alias, they will sketch the concept. Then the concept essentially becomes a prop. Assembled components, right? So 3D products and detailing. Then simulations happens, crash test, aerodynamics, right? Then essentially they will make a physical component, one physical component, and do a physical test. And then essentially they market, right? Manufacture it and market it, right? So this is the whole stage of product, right? So what are the high level challenges? As a design engineer, who you in the market, right? You need to understand the manufacturing and assembly constraints, right? What are the manufacturing and assembly constraints? What are the design tool knowledge that you, you should use, right? What tools do you need to have? What is GDNP, geometric dimensioning and tolerance, right? And understanding of GDNP and maintaining the uniqueness in design and creating customer centric models, right? Like, um, I'll see. So here, right? Here, I want to kind of come back into while that is the whole product development. Now, once we saw the product development phase, right? I want to, I want you to kind of think about, hey, I, I know I understand product development, uh, which where can a mechanical engineer be, right? Very, very simply put, right? So very, very simply put, the first step is CAD engineer, computer aided design engineer. As a CAD engineer, you are using a basic tool. It can be any tool, right? AutoCAD, CATIA, SOLIDWORKS, Siemens, or NX. Every tool has the same functionality, pretty much the same functionality. But as a CAD engineer, that's the what that's what we call as an entry level role, right? Usually, a CAD engineer gets paid is the lowest paid as well. Uh, if you're a CAD engineer in a tier two, tier three company, um, you will be getting paid anywhere between. And this is the this is the reason, right? Like a CAD engineer need to only, um, so I will give you a drawing. I need to only replicate the drawing. I don't put any engineering. I am just a replicator of a drawing, right? As a fundamental CAD engineer, I am replicating. And that's why CAD engineers get paid a little low, especially in tier one, tier two, sorry, in tier three and tier two companies, 15 to 20 or max, max 25K, right? As a fresher. Once you are a CAD engineer, right? The next step, right? If you, so if you know only the tool, you do not know engineering behind the uh, tool, right? And you do not know the theory that you want to apply in the tool, then CAD engineer is the fundamental aspect. The second one is a product development stage, right? In the product development stage, essentially product developers are design engineers, right? Uh, product developers are design engineers they know what is plastics what is sheet metal how does plastics uh, uh, ca uh, characteristic work how does sheet metal characteristic work right how are the plastics manufactured how are the sheet metal manufactured right why is this important right say for example if you think about sheet metals sheet metals are pressed cut and uh, welded or soldered to make a component right plastics essentially are pallets of plastic parts that go into a hopper that gets melted and that molten plastic essentially flows to make a plastic component. So uh, the way you need to design a sheet metal is different from a way you need to design a plastic. When you think about it, say for example, uh, say for example, our, uh, I don't know if you can see my screen. Uh, can you guys see my camera? If you, if you just see my camera, right? Uh, so this is a plastic component, right? This is a, a remote, this is a plastic component. So here, for example, you will see that, uh, let me, yeah. So take any, any, uh, any remote in your screen, in, in your home, right? You will see two dots on the top, right? Those two dots might be what it's called gate. That is the point where the plastic flows into the mold and mix. So now as a design engineer, if I know how the plastic will flow, how the sheet metal, is, uh, what are the sheet metal characteristics, then it allows me the ability to design it in the 
perfect way so that it is manufacturable right so that it is manufacturable so people who know the, that is called design engineer so if you are if you know plastics and sheet metal in a good way then you can apply for a graduate engineer training in design a baw engineer body in white engineer because all your body in white components your hood of your car roof of your hood your hood is the bonnet roof of the car side doors back doors all have so what you are seeing out here right what you are seeing out here this is essentially sheet metals right this sheet metal is made by a what we call as a baw engineer what you see here is plastic components so this is essentially made by a plastics engineer right so the job opportunities that you can aim for is get design baw engineer or trims engineer right uh, if you say for example here so <clears throat> i'll take one step back right so i'll take one step back in design there are four fundamental concepts one is solid modeling two is surface modeling three is sheet metal modeling four is plastic modeling as a cad engineer right you are expected to know at least solid modeling and surface modeling solid modeling is very simple guys solid modeling is any any component that is solid it has a uh, has a uh, width depth and thickness uh, and that is solid right very very simple surface modeling the exterior component of this uh, car is a surface the way you need to build surface is a little different from you the way you design solids so uh, the, there is a significant difference from surface modeling and solid modeling but if you only know these two things you can be a good cad engineer right it is easy to learn these two things should be only 60 to 90 days of work that you should put every day 2 3 hours you should be able to nail solid and surface model right the next step is sheet metal and plastic right so now i already spoke about sheet metals and plastics how they essentially vary so sheet metal and plastic if you know sheet metal and plastic it allows you to essentially become a design engineer right you are not only a cad engineer as a design engineer you know the fundamental aspects of how to uh, how to think about manufacturability how to design sheet metals how to essentially design plastic components right same thing right once you know this right so these are design engineers usually 35 40k uh, ctc right in tier 2 tier 1 uh, companies or engineering services companies once you know this and if you are working 2 years as a design engineer right the next thing i'm i'm going to keep a automotive example is lighting design harness design and seating design right in an automotive spectrum but very similar in locomotive train or aerospace uh, or any product company right so lighting is pretty much how do you how do you design glass how do how does light essentially uh, reflect harness is your electric uh, electric wiring seating is essentially your seats these specializations these specializations make you a uh, senior design engineer right very very uh, uh, guys can you hear me well archana said uh, sound is not visible, uh, audible uh, can you guys hear me okay okay great see design engineer and senior design engineers are people who specialize usually 4 5 years right and then the people who take a look at the overall design release engineer these engineers now essentially they look from cad design to senior design not only on one component but the overall assembly itself right so that is a design release engineer right so, so this is the whole thing right uh, so uh, so this is the whole thing cad design senior design and senior design release engineer ashish mane asked a question right i'm going to come back to this question ashish i'll definitely answer that question uh, so this is the whole spectrum now what are the skills required to build right see very very simple so engineering basics with respect to engineering basics hey i would i would recommend if you how do you how do you identify a lot of us right when i was graduating i did not know should i take design should i take FEA should I take CFD? What is the area that interests me more? I did not know, right? But over a period of time, we have kind of structured something, which is very very simple. 
right if you are naturally inclined to subjects like engineering graphics strength of materials kinematic of machines theory of machines uh, design of machine elements so you have a you have a uh, you, you are someone who can become a senior design engineer and a dre over a period of time right so that is something fundamental right so if you want some of the skills that can put you in a entry level job or even a experienced job is having a uh, entry level job is engineering basics plus hands on cat tool a uh, good entry level job is engineering basics hands on cat tool and understanding plastics sheet metal and gdnt and a good experience role is essentially product development now i'm going to take a little detour right so as a cad engineer so i don't know if you guys can see my screen uh, let me know if you can if i want to if i need to kind of increase the font size right uh, can you see right now the uh, font, uh, font you should see a google sheet okay super see these are the job roles right cad engineer so what are the skills required so you need to know either of these right i, I wouldn't say say for example in the tool right does not matter which tool you know if you know one tool well and then gdnt and then engineering drawing one tool well and then you know about geometric dimensioning and tolerancing engineering draw drawing right you can apply for a cad engineer right um, so you can essentially work in any spe specific sector not only in automotive say you want to become a good entry level design engineer then definitely right sheet metal and plastic design right definitely that then you should be a little interested in strength of material what we call as som in our undergrad strength of material because we need to understand what is displacement what is stress because once the simulation is done in the product development cycle if you remember concept development product development and detailing simulation once the simulation is done they will give feedback saying okay the stress is higher out here in that particular product now you need to essentially look at stress concentration understand what stress concentration is and essentially say hey okay i need to redesign that particular part of the uh, product right so that is where G in strength of materials comes into play it's easy to pick it up right it's not a difficult uh, subject it's easy to pick it up again gdnt is important engineering drawing is important if you know alias again one of the you know, things right i'm so this is in addition to one good software skill one good software skill in addition to this right senior design engineer so all i'm saying the way that you should think about this is so if you want to become a design cad engineer you need to know this if you want to become a design engineer you need to know this and this right if you be, need to become a senior design engineer you need to know this this and this right so senior design so i if you remember in design engineer i said only strength of material in senior design engineer you need to understand kinematics uh, theory of machines manufacturing because as a senior design engineer you need to think about how do this how do these parts ma get manufactured as well and you need to give feedback to your design engineer right so then essentially automotive sheet metal designer is where you uh, in addition to all those things you need to look at very good sheet metal designing uh, aspect of it right and product design engineer right again everything included product engineers or design engineers are 5 to 8 years uh, experience roles right design release engineer then there is wiring harness and seating design engineer so these are some of the job roles right skills required and keywords right that keywords that you can look at in the industry when they are asking for uh, these jobs right so i will go back can i jump on design engineer if not interested in cad engineering wajahat dongre had asked me this question right wajahat absolutely right absolutely right so cad engineer is the first step you should not be satisfied being a cad engineer right we all have the capability to become a product development engineer and therefore we need to learn cad once we get into cad engineering if you can aim to get into design engineer itself directly as a fresher but if you are in cad engineering you should essentially say okay i'm taking cad but i am going to learn a little bit of strength of materials nobody is going to give you and ask you to learn right once you go into work nobody is going to force you to do anything 
until you do the drawings and drafting that they ask you are good it's just that you it's our career right we need to take control of it you need to become better at strength of materials you need to become better at sheet metal design you need to become better at plastic design and that's where companies like skilling can come help you as well right i'll uh, uh, i'll kind of um, explain to them so someone is saying designing is difficult requires a lot of mastery right not really guys not really it's just that it requires a lot of time i agree right say for example i'll just show you some of the skilling profiles right you will be amazed right you will be amazed of what people who have not had any design experience before right so this is skilling profiles right i'll just click design right and show you some of the projects that our students have worked on right say for example out here sukumar right 111 projects abhijit 77 projects vikas 73 projects right so i'll just pick five people right like if you basically look at all these projects so i'll show you some of the design projects Students, uh, first one. Please grab standing there. Let me see. So there are so many projects that a particular. See, this is the kind of amount of work that somebody does in order to kind of become a a uh, very very good person, right? In at the end of the day, it's just an experience, right? So let me. see if i can get you a good design project say for example ah oh, this is a great great example right uh, all the parts model and assembly of an american shopper right this is solid model this is surface model right uh, batch mesh sansik sorry guys i'm just going to take some more time to showcase you some of the things that you can do right uh, if you are if you just put your effort right say for example this is a solid model right so this is a 3d model of a component right amol under root so this is a yak that the student has worked on right so and this is the multiple aspects of this right so i can just go on it's just that over a period of time if you put in your effort right it will be very very easy for you to showcase uh the uh, projects right say for example here right? let me just show this see the amount of projects that these students do right so for example this is a final project that uh, in our course work where the student has worked on a side door uh right and how they have worked on and all these students have not have any experience in design they came fresh out of uh, college or without after graduating or in college or while working without any experience and then they put in day in day at the end of the day every skill is an uh, effort right like we if we put in the required effort over a period of time we will get uh, they, they they will get uh, successful right so very very simple so um, again i do not uh, i do, it requires everything requires mastery but to get mastery it's about the amount of hours that we spend right to get mastery right uh, it's it's just a matter of time if we spend 2 hours every day for say 100 days that's 200 hours right at 200 hours of work you will be so just to give you a example right in a for a pilot to get a commercial pilot license they say you need 200 hours of flying if you if they say 200 hours of flying gives you a commercial pilot license right 2 hours every every day for 100 days gives you a good knowledge on uh, your basics right so uh, faizan can skilling help experienced people to change their career in the, into design sector so definitely uh, dunga sai kumar can we get a job even if we have a career gap see it depends on how much career gap and depends on your expectation right if you are expecting a 8 to 10 8 years career gap and a 8 to 10 lakh job first up no it might not be possible right but if you are have a 4 5 years experience 4 5 years career gap but you are essentially ready to put that effort and you p 
people at the end of the day people need good talented engineers who have the skills if you showcase a projects like what i showcase right people will be open to interview you right people will be open to interview you and you should be able to get a good package to start with and then you can essentially grow ravi i am poor in basics how could i design engineering right see your fundamentals does not matter right see sorry your fundamentals matter but where you start does not matter right everything can be learned everything that is my my uh, my learning in life right i i come from a very uh, normal background right my my father was a marketing manager in india pistons limited right i graduated out of st joseph's engineering college in 2011 i got a cts job but i did not want to take it up because i was a mechanical engineer i went to vijayawada to intern without money right they did not pay me then out of sheer luck i got into university of wisconsin madison right it was sheer luck and, and got into uw madison and i was i was feeling that i do not know anything and i knew that i did not know anything right and from that saying it's day one putting in effort every day right i've been able to finish my masters get into a company like cummins work there for 3 years then essentially say hey there are a lot of engineers like me back in india and quit my job move back to india have no idea about business right no money quit a good well paying job come back to india and if and over the last 6 7 years help almost 30 40000 of engineers if i can do this everyone can do this it's just that we need to at the end of the day we assume a lot of thing that i it, it, there are not enough engineering jobs it's an assumption that we make based on somebody saying that it's not true design needs a lot of fundamentals how can i learn fundamentals without because i am weak it's not true right so all those uh, things i would definitely recommend you to take it away right uh, so yeah so that's that's something so i, I know i'm a lot of a uh, lot of questions i'll take it but uh, i i just want to be conscious of the time and kind of move a little faster as well so what are the type of companies that i right very simple there are five types of companies right oem how, what how many people can say what is an oem can you just type what is an oem what is an oem okay original equipment manufacturers who give me example of a good oem give me example of a good oem maruti tata yes mahindra hyundai right all those people are oems right now oems are not the are the people who build the end product for example the end product will have multiple sub components the engine might be provided by some other company it might be hyundai providing for kia hyundai might hyundai might provide the engine right so tire one suppliers are companies that provide components to an oem tire two suppliers are suppliers who provide components to an tire one company say for example if um, if ashok leyland is an engine manufacturing company or cummins is an engine manufacturing company india pistons limited will provide the piston for that engine then for the piston to be provided the tire three will be the raw material sheet metal that will be provided so these are the different types of companies the highest jobs are essentially in oem the highest paying jobs are in oem tire one suppliers also provide good paying jobs right and then come to tier 2 and tier 3 and then there is a separate parallel segment for engineering services engineering services companies uh, pay very well right uh, in comparison to a tier 1 company the companies like tata technologies your uh, um, cts tcs all are engineering services uh, continental tata technologies scient explio all these are also engineering services companies right here are the, the those are the job opportunities and here are some of the companies right uh, your engineering services companies are your capgemini tata technologies alten your oems are your ford hyundai daimler volkswagen your tier one companies are your 
Magna, Continental, Valio, Bosch, and then your tier two uh, companies are your 3M, TBS, Sundaram Fasteners, Texas Instruments, right? Uh, so these are the type of segmentation, right? Okay, great. Uh, so just to kind of summarize, I am a mechanical engineer. What courses should I like a lot to become a design engineer in my undergrad? Can you guys uh, answer that? What are the courses that I should like a lot if I want to become a design engineer in my undergrad? Yes, engineering design. Yes, engineering graphics, manufacturing, design of machine elements, strength of materials, and kinematics. Right? These are the these are the fundamental theory subjects that we should like if we want to get into design. Right? What are the different types of job roles in design engineering? Can you guys mention we covered four types of job roles? What are the different types of job roles in design engineering? CAD engineer. Design engineer, senior design specialist, product engineer, and design release engineer. Right? These are the five common most roles in design engineering. If I want to become a CAD engineer, what knowledge should I have? Can you guys take a guess out here? What knowledge should I have if I want to become a CAD engineer? Right? I should have very good tool knowledge and good understanding of fundamentals and solid and surface modeling, right? Solid and surface modeling and good understanding of tool knowledge, right? If I want to become a design engineer, what should I have? I should have sheet metal modeling and plastic modeling uh, understanding. If I want to become a senior design engineer, the knowledge that I should have is, I should go deep into a particular domain, lighting, seating, and wiring harness. And what companies hire? There are four to five types of companies, OEMs, tier one supplier, tier two suppliers, tier three suppliers, engineering services companies, right? So I'll kind of take a stop here. I have a, I have simulations as well. Should I go into simulations? What are your thoughts? I have half an hour. I can go into simulations as well and give a overview. Uh, let me know uh, your thoughts. I'll kind of uh, uh, go into that if you want. Okay, so I see a lot of yes, uh, G H G G uh, is saying no clear up doubts. So what I'll do is in, I'll take 20 minutes to go over pro, uh, analysis and then probably over the last 10 minutes, clear your doubts as well, right? Um, great, so how to build a safe car, right? Um, see what happens during a car accident, right? First, if we are, take, let's take an example, a side crash or a frontal crash. What happens during a car accident? So the car essentially collides, right? The question becomes, if, if the car collides, should I save the passenger or should I save the car? What is the correct answer? Should I save the passenger or should I save the car? Priyanshu is saying passenger. Exactly. The correct answer is passenger, right? And, and that's what we essentially need to focus on. How So now, if we need to save the passenger, what are the, how, how does the industry solve this problem of building a safer car? That's what we are going to look at, okay? So this is where something called as a computer-aided engineering comes into place. Computer-aided design is in the design process. Computer-aided engineering is in the simulation process. There are eight techniques in the CAE field. Linear static, right? Linear static, non-linear, dynamic, buckling, thermal, fatigue, computational fluid dynamics, noise and vibration harshness, right? So thermal is nothing but heat. Fatigue is nothing but over a period of time, what kind of analysis, what kind of uh, fatigue creeps in into the system. Computational fluid dynamics we'll discuss. Noise and vibration is about the vibration that happens and how that impacts the structure. Buckling, right? For uh, structures that are long, how, how can buckling happen, right? And same thing with dynamic, non-linear, and linear static, right? So how, what are the three methods to solve engineering problems? Solving engineering problems, there are three methods. One is relative testing. Manufacture and test and see what's happening. Then analytical method. Take a pen and pencil. Look at, hey, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, what's the analysis, essentially math saying, 
And third is the numerical analysis. For complex components, you need to have a complex, you, complex components, you need to break complex components into simple ones. And these simple ones, you need to put a so, uh, equation to solve these simple components and then stitch it across, right? Again, I'll kind of go a little quick out here. Uh, stop me if I, if we, uh, if we, if you essentially have a question. How, again, relative testing, nothing, right? Physical testing of component as an experiment. The problem with this is costly and time consuming. Analytical method is very, very simple. Say for example, here, right? If I'm essentially uh, designing a bike like this, and I want, I'm 100 kilos, I want to kind of stand on it. I can essentially design a bike and put 100 kilos on it and see if it breaks, right? It's just that it's costly to, uh, costly to manufacture this and test, right? That's the only thing. The analytical method, right? There are math calculations by using formulas provided in textbook as an analytical. So the problem is you can solve in analytical method only for simple problems, right? Simple problems and defined, uh, defined geometry, right? Uh, this method is not applicable for complex shapes. Numerical analysis, right? This is the most common method over the last 20 years, right? By using computers, virtually testing a CAD model, computer-aided design model using computers, right? Numerical solutions can be obtained by using different solvers. Do not worry about what solvers is, I'll explain. This essentially, the advantage is reduces cost because you do not need to manufacture to test. And essentially, you can get results than any other method. You can get results and improve your design and again analyze, right? Without spending cost. Now, how does it look like? Say, for example, I'll take an example of a, this is essentially a buckle, right? So we are seeing how does the clip essentially go and snap. This is important because we need to understand where the stress concentration is, right? If there is stress concentration higher here, then what should be this? thickness, right? Where is the stress concentration and what should be the thickness? So this is what, as a simulation engineer, you will look into. Same out here as well, right? So there are gears, right? So whenever there is uh, the gears touch each other, there is, again, concentration of stress there, right? How does it happen? Again, this is mod, uh, multi-body dynamics. This is what we call as vehicle dynamics, right? Essentially, when the vehicle is going on the road, what kind of forces act on different components, right? And this is what we call as crash analysis. When a crash happens, what, what is doing it, right? So here, right, I'll kind of, these are multiple different types of models and analysis, right? So I'll kind of, how, let's take an example, right? How does the industry solve a problem of building a safe car, right? right? We'll take the physical testing, high cost, time consuming, more wastage, simulation, low cost, less time consuming, no wastage, right? So let's look at this, right? So in physical test, this is what it looks like. So we can simulate that in a virtual environment as well. Now, what are the high, ch high level challenges? So guys, this is the most important. So unfortunately, I did not animate, right? But that's fine. I will kind of give you, uh, give you an overview. Just follow my cursor, right? So input, so first in the product development stage, if you remember, we said that is a product development and detail, right? So that team provides the, this is the design engineer or a senior design engineer or a who, uh, DRE, which provides a CAD model. The CAD model is provided to a simulation team, right? So simulation team, what does simulation team do? Simulation team, so there are three aspects. So you have a model, now, you need to make the model ready for an analysis. Making that model ready for analysis is called pre-processing, right? Making the model ready for analysis is called pre-processing. The engineering role usually is called meshing engineer. Meshing engineer is the role that you can, you can essentially apply for if you want to essentially, this is the equivalent of a CAD engineer, but it's highly, it's uh, highly paid as well, 30, 35K. Meshing engineer or pre-processing engineer, uh, the tools usually used are hypermesh and answer. Once you prepare the product, once you mesh the product, right? The second step is applying the equation, applying the governing equation, and setting up setting up the boundary condition. What is the force? How should it? Is it a frontal crash? Is it a uh, side crash? What is the what is the 
uh, if it is side crash as shown in the figure, what is the material of the uh, side pole, right? Essentially setting up all those things is a solver, right? So solver is essentially where you take the meshed model and apply boundary conditions and governing equations and solve, right? Again, solver usually is the higher role after pre-processing. So solvers, people who know solvers have higher package. So these are called simulations engineers, right? And once you have that, it's called post-processing. Once you are solved, right? You need to take the model and see where is the stress, where is the strain, where is the displacement, where, where is the structural stability getting loose, right? All that is also a simulation engineer. Some of the tools are hyperview, hypergraph, LS pre-post, right? So if the model succeeds, then they will say, yes, the model is essentially passing crash test, go manufacture. If the model is not succeeding, you, they will say, no, these are the design requirements, go design improvements. And this is where it goes back to not the CAD engineer, it goes either to the design engineer or senior design engineer. Therefore, you understanding kinematics or strength of materials is very important. That's This is one of the reasons, right? So I'll kind of go to the next slide, right? What is simulation, right? Understanding the behavior of a model using physical analysis, no need of prototypes. What is, so I'll kind of skip this. Why do we need simulations? Uh, CAE software is where to start. So these are some of the softwares. How are simulations done, right? So see, this is the CAD model, right? We get the CAD model first. Then if you basically see the CAD model will be like this, right? It will be like a circle or whatnot, right? Now to essentially say, for example, if I ask, Hey, how do you, this is a circle or a sphere. It is easy to kind of give a uh, surface area, but for a, think about this as a complex component, you will not be able to give a surface area or a area itself, right? <laughs> and that's why breaking this into a meshing, right? Known components, right? It's a, either triangle or uh, square or tetrahedral, right? That is what is called meshing. So you study the CAD, you mesh, the CAD. So in meshing, you essentially will mesh each component separately. Then you assemble the CAD different using the meshes. Then you will add material thickness and loads. Say for example, studying CAD meshing and assembling is what pre-processing will be, right? Material thickness and loads. That is where the essentially solver will come. Solver will also solve, analyze and correlate. Solve is where mostly solver analyze and correlate is the pre post-processing aspect of it right so this is the life cycle of a simulation right so let's take a real time application any new product you build will require simulation to check whether the product will survive these conditions right so these are cars aircraft smartphones toothbrush shoe anything right so probably this is any component that you can think about right so so as a simulation engineer, you're responsible for the product behavior, right? So say for example, in an iPhone, right? Say for example, this is this is without a case, right? In Without a case, this is the impact in a phone. With a case, the impact is slow when it is falling down, right? You can see this impact. So it falls down, the impact is less, right? Whereas if you see this, the impact is more, right? I don't know if you can see, but yeah. Uh, so pre-processing, right? So this will be the parent geometry. I'm going to explain in a very, very simple way. So they will take a mid surface of it, kind of mesh it. And then essentially this is what they call 2D mesh, right? This is what meshing in 2D mesh will look like. And then essentially they thicken the FP model, right? This is what it is called as a FP model, finite element model. This is the parent geometry. And that is the, uh, a finite element model, right? This is a basic example of what a meshing engineer will do, right? Say for example, let us look at the helmet. So this is the real helmet, the real helmet, right? So uh, will essentially become a CAD model, right? So the CAD model then will be meshed, right? So once the, so this is the meshed model. This is the meshed model, right? And then once the meshed model is there, say if you see, you can see block uh, square square elements, right? That's what it is called meshing, right? Uh, once the meshing is done, essentially we'll put material criteria and loads, right? So essentially 
meshing is the first aspect of it. Then meshing simulation validation is what post processing means. And so there are three things: meshing, pre-processing engineer, simulation, the person who solves, puts the material and uh, uh, load criteria, and then person who validates post process is the post processor. Right. What are the key uh, subjects, right? So again, one of the subjects that are not here, right, um, is essentially uh, good understanding of strength of material and finite element analysis, understanding the physics of a problem and basic knowledge of meshing, right? These are a few things that you should do. What are the application, any application, any product that you can think about? These are the career, right? Graduate engineer training, meshing and CAE modeler, simulation engineer and project engineer. Right. Uh, so skills required. Right. So in pre-processing, you need to check the CAD model. You need to essentially mesh the model, and you need to do connections. So this is the tool that you need to use is ANSA and HyperMesh. In solving, you need to apply loads as per real time. You need to fix the model as per the real time, asking solver to calculate the required result. So the tools that you need to the job role is essentially a CAE analyst or a simulation engineer. Job role is ANSYS, uh, sol solvers are ANSYS workbench, radios, and LS Dyno. Same thing, post processing, checking the results from the solver using animations, applying engineering principles to validate the results, reporting the findings back, right? Again, same job role, post processing, uh, hyperview, hypergraph, and LSP post, right? Again, so some of the courses that we have uh, which enable you to do all these things. So we have PG programs which enable you to do all these things, but uh, I'll kind of speak about it later. I'll kind of kind of quickly go to CFD, uh, right? So same problem statements, right? You define the problem, create a computational model. That's a CAD model. Discretize the model. This is the machine. Solve, solve solver. Analyze the results. Post processor. Make design changes. Repeat, right? So, so I'll see. Since I need to take some questions, I'll see. So see, at the end of the day, the FEA and CFD has the same thing, meshing, uh, solver, and post processor. It's just that the difference primarily is between what the governing equation that is provided in FEA and governing equation provided in CFD, right? So that's the two major differences. CFD is computational fluid dynamics, primarily aerodynamics or any, um, any heat exchange uh, analysis, all those are uh, CFD problems, right? So I'll just applications of CFD. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll kind of stop here, right? Uh, I think it's 8.15, right? Vajahat, uh, we can extend our meeting. Yes, Vajahat, yes, we can definitely extend our meeting. So um, I will kind of take some questions right now, right? Uh, so Vajahat, you will get the recorded video itself. So you do not need to worry. Um, Abhishek Yadav, I have already graduated, but I feel I haven't learned anything. People on the internet say build projects to deepen understanding. So can you tell how to select project ideas? Uh, Abhishek, that's a great, great question, Abhishek, right? Uh, see, at the end of the day, people, when people say work on projects, right? What they mean is essentially, they say work on projects that are very relevant to the industry. Now. And this was the question that I had when I built skilling, right? What are the projects? Say I can pick a project, right? But how do I know what, what I need to learn in order to work on the project well? Say, for example, if I pick a project, say a car crash analysis, right? If I'm picking a project, now I need to then learn about the tool, which might be a pre-processor, post-processor, and a solver. But I also need to know about the uh, finite element analysis and so on, right? And that's where um, again I'm not saying you should take up skilling but that's where a company like skilling can enable and help you right so if you basically look at this right so you just go to projects and uh, uh, so you essentially can work on multiple projects right uh, as a mechanical engineer so if I, if I just click on mechanical projects right hyper elastic material model so you can just see the number of projects that people work on right uh, and this essentially enables them to build a very very good uh, experience, right? Say, let, let's kind of say, um, let me take up something which is very 
basic. I don't want to show you very. So I should let me see. Say for example, so this is a twenty-five story. So this is a civil engineering project, but the student is essentially working on a twenty-five story building, right? So again, all these aspects of it, right, needs fundamental understanding as well, right? You cannot have the fun without a fundamental knowledge, you cannot do that, and that's why a platform like Skilling allows people to work on these many projects, right? There is no other platform. Again, I can say in the world, but in India, definitely, I haven't come across a platform that essentially. Uh, allows people to work on these many projects, right? Especially as a part of the course itself. If you go through the coursework, you will essentially be able to uh, take up these projects and assign do these projects. So let me just show you how it works, right? Like probably you will understand in that case, right? Um, so I'm just going to log into my account and show you guys how how it will work. Just bear with me for a minute. Um, say for example, out here, right? So now this is our dashboard, right? All the projects that I do will be here. If I'm taking a crash book worthiness coursework, right? Every coursework in our platform will have videos and challenges, right? So I will basically take a look at this uh, video, right? And it will all have all the aspects of it. Once I take a look at this video, right? Then I, I can I can immediately ask questions as well, right? Like I can I can essentially request for a mentoring session. I think one of the people asked, hey, how, how can I essentially, if I have a question, how can I ask, right? So I can just click on any particular thing. And uh, I can say, I want to discuss study plan. I can essentially pick up a 15 minute or a 30 minute duration, right? And say, and say uh, study plan discussion, right? And I can book a mentoring session. The beauty about this is I can essentially, so today is Tuesday, almost done, but tomorrow 10.30 AM, I can immediately confirm a session, right? So this will essentially allow me to get all my doubts clarified. The more important thing is every week there will be a project or assignment, right? Say for example, uh, we looked at uh, the assignment of frontal crash analysis. I can click on this, right? I can take a look at what is the assignment and then I will go, the models that you saw in the video will also be accessible. You can then go write a detailed report and submit, right? Whenever you save, right? What happens is it automatically creates a, in the backend, right? It automatically creates a project uh for you right this is the portfolio that you will look like right this portfolio will allow you to kind of showcase your work to the whole world right so this is what i would say this is i think when people say work on project this is the best way that i have at least seen uh to work on projects um uh, Subramania, I am a diploma holder. I want to start as a CAD designer. I don't have a graduate certificate or a DE certificate. Is it possible to start? Subramania, I do not know what is your salary at this point in time. Companies look for diploma holders as CAD design engineers. You can CAD is a very good starting point. As a diploma holder, the only expectation that I would have is essentially you should be okay with a uh, 20K job as a diploma holder. If you're an engineer, Right? That will be a 30K as a pressure, right? Is Python language learning helpful for mechanical graduate? Uh, Dilbug, yes. If you're in analysis, especially in post-processing or pre-processing in uh, uh, Python might be very, very helpful for automating, right? Jishnu, um, sir, is it worth pursuing MTech in mechatronics? Do mechatronics contribute in career growth for the, especially for mechanical engineers? Krishna, it is definitely helpful, Krishna. The problem is, at the end of the day, in mechatronics, what kind of projects are you going to work on, right? What is the end goal for you, right? If the end goal is essentially you working on a particular, so even if you're doing MTech, I would definitely recommend doing something additional to the MTech as well, or in order to upskill yourself with the right technical skills. If not, I'll say if you are currently working, right? Uh, I would definitely recommend. Uh, I would definitely recommend if you're working, take up a, 
I mean, I know I'm essentially uh, saying enrolled in a skilling course, but I think at this point in time, the skilling course is definitely helpful for uh, enabling people to uh, uh, take the right steps, right? Um, is it helpful to learn data science? As a mechanical engineer, if it, is it helpful to learn data science? The answer is yes, but if you want to become a mechanical engineer, you know, your thing, data science might be uh, the side skill set, but you need to learn the main skill set, right? Uh, BTEC 2016 pass out person, mechanical working in hotel, will I be able to migrate? Will company you will uh, company even consider me to interview? How hard is it? GHGG, if you have the right skills, right? See, I'm not going to promise that the company will hire at 40, 40, 45K, right? If you are moving from one domain to another and you do not have the relevant experience, right? Uh, you can move from production to design. The experience is valid. You can move from quality to design. If you are in hotel management to design, but you are a mechanical engineer, if you have the right skills, you can start a very good starting salary, right? 25 to 30K. As a, they will, again, think about it from the company point of view. They will think about it from a, uh, pressure perspective, right? Uh, Ravi, um, Ravi, if you are if you want to specialize in design engineering, um, I would definitely recommend our design engineering master's program. I think it is more helpful than a mtech degree at this point in time again that's my personal opinion i will let you uh, decide for yourself right but it is very very uh, it is more structured towards what the industry wants and uh, we can essentially enable a quick career transition if you're a btech student moving to a uh, looking looking into get into an industry right um after being a design engineer, what is my next development? Is it a FEA simulation engineer for my career growth? Jishnu, uh, Jishnu, it depends. Jishnu, if you are very, if you are already a specialist in a particular domain, right? Say for example, if you are a design engineer who is looking into, um, say, just in your second or third year, you are good at sheet metal plastic modeling, then your career opportunity is going deeper a little bit, probably in wiring harness. Seating, uh, seating or uh, lighting design. And the next career progression, I would say is product development. You get to know a little bit about analysis and uh, and then essentially product development. A product development engineer essentially oversees the whole product development process itself. They speak with the design team, they speak with the analysis team, they speak with the testing team, they speak with the manufacturing team. They work with all these teams and are central in order to engage with each team and make sure the product is getting to manufacturing stage, right? So that's what I would uh, recommend, uh, Jishnu. Uh, I'm a design engineer in lithium ion battery manufacturing company. I'm pretty comfortable with designing, but I want to learn thermal simulation so that I can create thermal management system for battery. How should I learn uh, these tools? Aditya Varadhan, uh, computational fluid dynamics, right? Uh, battery management system for computational fluid dynamics, I think, Skilling has a course on battery uh, battery thermal management, uh, an individual course, Aditya. Uh, that's something that you should definitely look at. Is that location assistance provided? Like example, if I, I'm from Mumbai, I want a job in Mumbai only. Guys, that is very, very difficult moment. Uh, I mean, we wish we can provide that. It's just that people, it's up to the companies where they essentially hire, right? Usually where we see jobs are, Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, Pune. Uh, yeah, this these are the four big automotive uh, automotive uh, areas where companies are hiring, right? Um, GGHD, you will provide job guarantee or job just job assistance, guys. So let me kind of make sure I am very very clear, right? Job guarantee or job assistance, right? The only thing that can enable you is essentially you need to have the right skills. Even if I say job guarantee, only if you have the skill set, the company will interview. All the companies that hire from us are companies of repute. They are not going to hire just because skilling has said. Every company will interview you. In order for you to succeed in the interview, you need to have the skills. In order for you to have the skills, you need to put that effort to gain the skills. 
And where we come in is we will enable you to learn those skills whenever you have a question, whenever you have any uh, roadblock, we will enable you to uh, help you get those skills clear, right? So that's what I would, uh, I would say. Um, what if I am having less than 60% but have experience in design and also have good experience GDNT? I think uh, that if you have good experience, Dinesh Patil, you, you should be able to kind of grow. Uh, uh, your previous uh, 12th uh, mark should not, 12th or undergrad mark should not be, um, uh, should not be a, uh, what should I say, a roadblock for you. Um, how to decide whether to stick to a core field like mechanical or to divert towards a multi-domain field like robotics? Sidesh. Sidesh, it starts from where you are today, right? I would say if you're a fresher, again, I do not know what is your uh, different, uh, uh, what is your experience at this point in time. If you're a fresher, what I would advise is pick, see the first skill that you really like. It can be any skill uh, and get to a company that allows you to apply that particular skill. It can be design, it can be CFD, it can be FPA, allow you to apply. In a year or two, gain additional skills like computing, right? Where then you can say, I have a core skill set, a design skill set, and I have a computing skill set. And now I want to kind of go into a multi-domain uh, multi domain, uh, or an interdependent uh, job role, right? So any person with a computing skill will always be more, um, more uh, um, what, what should I say, uh, looked for in the industry, right? Uh, Mali, I'm a 2018 mechanical engineering pass out, currently working in TCS as a quality analyst in a project which has almost zero application of mechanical engineering, earning 25K per month. But I want a high paying job. I have a good interest in design subject. I have appeared gate for five times, qualified two times. Can Scaling assure me a job of 60K or 70K? Mali, we cannot assure you a 60K or 70K job, right? Uh, it will, can you get 60K, 70K? We have had students who have got uh, 7 lakh, 8 lakh packages at Mahindra, right? And this is like the same profile as you. Can everybody get that? Can we assure? We can, like, nobody can guarantee anything, right? But what we can see is if you're getting 25K at CCS, we can easily get a 40, 42, or 45K. If you have the, if you, uh, if you put in your effort and build a very, very, if you put in your effort, put in that uh, time and experience to build that portfolio, it is a eight to 12 month process. Do not think this is a two, three month process where you can do some magic. There is no magic guys. There is no magic where we can essentially, uh, if, if there is a magic uh, of two to three months, everybody will essentially uh, be able to do, right? It's like, it's not possible, right? Um, uh, will your assignment be reviewed and follow of course completion or feedback will be taken during module completion? Yes, uh, your, all your assignments will be reviewed, yes. Uh, so for design engineer job, beside basic theory subject, what to start and where? So guys, I don't know if you have seen this uh, platform, go to grow.skilling.com, right? Here uh, we have also provided a uh, lot of test materials, right? You can log in and essentially get access to uh, a lot of test materials uh, and free workshops, right? So. Uh, you can you can go to grow.skilling.com uh, in order to do that. Um, sir, I have good knowledge of software, but not good in fundamentals. So in interview, can fundamental see Durgesh in interview they will ask fundamentals, right? But if you have good knowledge of tool, uh, um, you should be able to also crack into right. Um, Having professional degree in mechanical engineering and if want to get placed in IT sector, does a degree restrict the job opportunity in IT industry as we are not degree holders of IT sector? Krishna, the answer is no, Krishna. Your degree does not, especially in IT, your degree does not, uh, uh, does not do anything, right? Um, great, guys. Uh, it's almost 8.30, right? Uh, so I'm going to kind of, uh, 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 kind of close this. Vivek, are you here? Uh, Hey, hi Surya. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Vivek, do you want to speak about uh, the coursework and uh, what are the opportunities that are available uh, in the coursework? Right. Guys, uh, one of the things that we have done, right, uh, uh, 
is on skill link right in skill link we have built a lot of very good coursework for mechanical engineers especially in the automotive domain right uh, your our post graduate in hi hybrid electric vehicles our post graduate in cad and post graduate in cae and post graduate in these four programs essentially enable any individual to succeed uh, into getting a very very strong uh, engineering job right uh, if you put in your effort right if you put in your effort we, we have seen people succeed at a greater pace right so you can also look at uh, some of the recent placements that essentially we have done almost 2500 people have in uh, got placed so here's the recent placements you can uh, essentially take a look at it so i i understand a lot of you are interested in our coursework so if you are someone who's interested in our coursework do let us know your name email id and phone number i see a lot more questions coming in uh, so if you are interested provide us your name email id and phone number we'll be happy to get in touch with you and provide a career counseling so uh, if you have any questions as well so and just uh, make sure you uh, ping it uh, in dm so that we can essentially uh, get your name email id and phone number if you are interested or if you have any particular questions you can just ask out uh, as well we will be happy to kind of reach out thank you so much for attending I, uh, we are almost at the end of the meeting thank you so much for attending and uh, looking forward to seeing you all succeed in your careers hope this was uh, helpful uh, was this helpful uh, any feedback on this so we have put a feedback form if you can essentially provide your uh, feedback and uh, also get your certificate that will be helpful let me know if this was helpful uh, today and thanks for taking time